I realized this morning the sermon is actually five stories in a question, but you know, kind of everything. I love babies. I don't know why. I didn't used to have any use for babies, and then we had some, and suddenly, wow, babies were great. And I miss babies. Um, looking forward to someday when my kids maybe, you know, provide me with some grandchildren, but no hurry. No hurry, guys. Um, but, um, you know, so, so it was tempting this morning to do a sermon about baby Jesus in the manger, all wrapped in swaddling clothes. Just the whole thought about it. So somebody changed God's cycles. What an idea. But, but then, then, you know, we were watching TV the other day, and, and we had the true meaning of Christmas and the real story of Christmas told to us by Shrek. <laughs> and of course, the real story of Christmas begins with "Twas the night before Christmas, and all through the house, not a creature was stirring, not even a mouse." The real story of Christmas, I was told. And so I thought, you know, maybe we've had enough romantic stuff. And certainly, if we, you know, haven't had enough romantic stuff this Christmas, we can probably go on Netflix and or on YouTube and find a ton more. And Luke isn't very helpful with romantic stuff. There's, there's a little bit of it. But he's, he's pretty hard in his assessment of the world. So I thought I'd start there. So Luke tells us four different stories. And the first story is, And there went out a decree from Emperor Augustus that all the world should be taxed, or enrolled, or registered, or something. And this was the first one, and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. <coughs> so Luke begins this part of his story with the Romans. And he understands the Romans in terms of oppression and power and taxation. This is the way he understands the Romans and their, the stamp they have placed on the world. But this is where he wants to begin his story. But of course, this isn't really a story about the Romans, although right, we're going to get Romans becoming part of the story all the way to the end, where Jesus dies on a Roman cross. So it's not like we're going to leave them behind, but we're just going to set them aside for now, and we're going to move on. All right, so Joseph. Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to the city of David called Bethlehem, because he was descended from the house and family of David. So the second story that Luke is trying to tell us here is the story of the Jews. And for him, this is the story of tradition. This is the story of identity. This is who we are as a people. And we are the chosen people of God. And we continue on in this tradition as time goes on. And Jesus comes to us out of that tradition and, and works within that tradition. So this is the story of family and tradition important part of Luke's story. And of course, here's where it gets ironic, too, because Joseph is going back to the city of David, to the city of the great king, and he's going there to be taxed by the Romans. How embarrassing. You're going to the city of the great Jewish king to be taxed by a foreign oppressor. That's why he's going there. So, both of these stories are political and religious at the same time. It's not like, well, we're just going to tell the political story this morning, or we're just going to talk about religious stuff this morning. It's like, you can't really talk about one without talking about the other um, any more in the Bible than you can today. They're just part of our same reality. So that's the second story. The third story, of course, the obvious one, right, is that while they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. So the third story is the story of Jesus. And the story of Jesus is one of disrupting both of the previous stories 
of fitting in but not fitting in. And part of the message of Jesus is going to be that this whole great division between the Jews and the Romans, between the oppressor and the oppressed, isn't really that important. Or it's important in different ways than we thought because Jesus came to proclaim salvation to the Jews and the Romans. And he seemed to think that they were somehow connected and it wasn't like one or the other. That it was the salvation of both peoples that was important. This is what mattered. So Jesus comes and he disrupts both of the first two stories in, in very significant ways. The fourth story gets hidden a bit. It's going to get sort of more and more important. If we worked our way through Luke and then through Acts, it would sort of dominate the story by the end. But we see it in, in just one verse here, which is in verse 10. But the angel said to the shepherds, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joys for all the people. The first, fourth story is what's happening in Luke's day. There's something weird happening in the church in Luke's day, and that is mostly it's full of Gentiles now. The Jewish Messiah has been sent by the Jewish God to the Jewish people about a Jewish renewal movement, and the Gentiles are joining in waves. What's going on? It's sort of like if we have this Make America Great Again movement, and most of the people who are joining are Mexicans. You go, like, well, that's really strange. What's going on here? And that's sort of what's happening in Luke's day, is that Gentiles are taking over this Jewish renewal movement. And people are wondering, and so one of the things that Luke is, continues to emphasize throughout his gospel, and, and Jesus talks about regularly in his life, is that this whole Jewish-Gentile divide really isn't, isn't that important. In fact, not only is it not important, but you guys really got to get over this. Right? Which is hard. Because it was like, I mean, it's identity. Oh, by the way, set aside your identity, go with something else. Hard, hard work for the early church. So these are the four stories that Luke tells us. And into this we have to add a fifth. And the fifth story, of course, is ours. It's the story of you and me. Because, right, in terms of reading a text, it's readers that create meaning. And in terms of being Christians, our task as readers is always to try to figure out what does this old story have to do with the world today. So this is our story, the story of trying to create this new thing. And of course, one of the things that's happened is that this brand new thing that God was doing in Jesus has sort of become the old, old thing. It's become tradition rather than new. And it sort of tries to be both at the same time, which is always curious. Right? And, and so we, we know how things are supposed to be, because we have this tradition. We know that the true story of Christmas isn't supposed to be told to us by Shrek. It's supposed to be told to us by Linus. <laughs> right? Who knew, who knew how to tell the story the right way? But still, right? So we have these five stories and a question. And the question I'm going to a ask you is not one I'm going to give you the answer to. It's not one of those sorts of sermons. I'm going to just leave you with this question hanging. Because it's a tough one and it's not one with a simple answer. And the question simply is, does it matter? So taking cue from Jesus, who said that this whole Roman-Jewish divide doesn't matter, the question today, then, is does the whole Republican-Democrat divide matter? And the answer there is sort of, right? I don't know, right? But obviously, as Christians, we have to proclaim that any salvation that's meaningful in, in the sense of Jesus has to be the salvation of both the Democrats and the Republicans that any political party is in need of salvation and always will be in need of salvation. It's not like 
Right? We are going to save them or they are going to save us. It's that hopefully God is going to save all of us. I suppose. Does it matter? Does it matter that most of the work of the church is now being done by people who aren't part of church? Much of the gospel says the work of the church is to feed the hungry and clothe the naked and cure the sick. And a lot of that work is currently being done by healthcare workers and social workers and government agencies and people who certainly don't need to have any connection to the church. Does that matter? Is it a bit embarrassing? Or is it just the way things are? Or is it something to rejoice? Right? Because, you know, at least it's getting done. Mostly, somewhat. It doesn't matter. The third and last part of doesn't matter is a tough one for me. Does the whole, so Jesus said that the whole division between Jews and Gentiles doesn't matter. Well, we've sort of gotten over that one, except that, of course, there's no Jews left right, in most of our churches. But the third question is, does the whole division between Christians and non-Christians really matter? Is this division, is it time to get over this one? Right? Because in some ways it's the same division. It's the religious against the non-religious. It's those from the tradition and those not from the tradition those who believe these things and those who believe those things. Does it matter anymore? Because we live in a world where some of us may get along better with the Muslim neighbor on one side than with the Christian neighbor on the other. We certainly often have more things in common with people who aren't Christians than we do with people who are Christians. This election for many of you, it was probably an experience like that, where the majority of the church voted one way and you voted the other, or maybe not. I don't know how you voted. Right? So does it matter? Does it matter that the work of God is being done by people? I think of that also in terms of this neighborhood. There are roughly six houses that somehow touch my lap lot right over there. And of those houses, as far as I know, none of those people go to church regularly. None. And as far as I know, of the houses that touch this church property, also none of them go to church regularly. I could be wrong, but I don't think so. Does it matter? And I don't know the answer to that one. But I think it's worth asking. Because Jesus came and proclaimed salvation. And if this is not about our neighbors, what is it about? And if it does matter, then it should. And if it doesn't matter, then it's okay. I don't know. So I'm just going to leave you there with a question, does it matter? Give you a minute to think about it, and we'll conclude with a song.